first off, we have to realize we're not invincible. You have to think that sometimes to do your job and to do it right, but you also have to, you know, do a risk analysis. It's hard to see that happen, but then again, it's even harder to know that there's something you could have done to stop that. Well, it was 91 um, and uh, went to the doctor and they found it and had to go to a couple of different doctors for some tests and all. And um, from there, you know, went and had surgery. It's concerning at any time. Um, like I said, luckily we caught it early on. Um, it is one of the highest mortality rate illnesses. Um, but uh, just, I was very fortunate. Um, Bobby Reno came here as a 16 year old kid. We pretty much raised him in the fire station. Taught him responsibility when to show up on work, got him a few jobs. Um, he was a great kid, and it happened a few years ago. He was diagnosed, and it kind of put a damper on the whole station, pretty much the whole community. And then it went away, and then it came back, and then it stayed, and we lost Bob. Cancer a six-letter word that can strike fear into the heart of even the toughest firefighter. We believe cancer has become an epidemic in the fire service. Following are some steps you and your department can take to prevent the ravages of cancer. Multiple studies have repeatedly demonstrated credible evidence and biological credibility for statistically higher rates of multiple types of cancer in firefighters compared to the general American population, which include testicular cancer, multiple myeloma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, skin cancer, prostate cancer, malignant melanoma, brain cancer, colon cancer, leukemia, and breast cancer in women. It has become increasingly clear that two routes of greatest concern for the entry of carcinogens into the bodies of firefighters are lungs and the skin. When firefighters do not wear or prematurely remove their SCBA, especially during overhaul, toxins and carcinogens can enter into the body through the lungs. Do a gross field decon of your PPE to remove as much soot and particles as possible as soon as you exit the structure. Use a mixture of water and soap with a brush to decontaminate your PPE on the scene as thoroughly as possible. Following the lungs, the skin is the second route of concern and it is highly absorbative. Some areas of the skin are more permeable than others, specifically the face, the angle of the jaw, the neck and throat, and the groin. Skin's permeability increases with temperature. For every five degree increase in skin temperature, absorption increases 400%. Use wet nap or baby wipes to remove as much soot as possible from the head, neck, jaw, throat, and underarms, and hands as soon as possible while still on the scene. Shower thoroughly as soon as possible after a fire. Change your clothes and wash them immediately after a fire because they contain soot and carcinogens. Clean your PPE, gloves, hood, and helmet immediately after a fire using a commercial gear washer or whatever resource your department has available. Another option is contracting with a local laundry service to have PPE professionally cleaned. Do not take contaminated clothing or PPE home or store it in your vehicle. These items can continue to off-gas toxins and carcinogens, particularly if they are reheated in the interior of a hot vehicle. This could possibly contaminate other options in the vehicle and the home. Decon the fire apparatus interior after fires to prevent cross-contamination of clean uniforms and PPE.
Keep PPE out of living and sleeping quarters to prevent contamination of these areas. Along with these steps, some other protective measures that departments can take are Develop a cancer prevention policy to assist with integrating these protective actions into your department. Included in this policy should be some form of exposure documentation similar to hazmat and biohazard exposures. If your PPE is stored in engine bays not equipped with exhaust ventilation systems, find ways to protect the PPE from diesel exhaust contamination such as clean rooms away from the exhaust. Educate firefighters on the dangers associated with tobacco use. Today's fire service um, is truly a risky career. Years ago, we felt like that the dirtier you were, the better you performed. Um, not so true. It's, it's out there, we're aware of it, um, but we need to know more. You know, you share meals with each other, you share holidays with each other, and um, to see it taken away in the blink of an eye. I never want to have to see a flag draped coffin because of it again. You know, there's things we can do to stop it, and we should. We, we've got enough dangers that we respond to. We need to take care of the dangers around us. If we can't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of anyone else. I mean, you hear all the time guys retire and then they die. You know, a guy will work 20, 30 years, retire, and then two years later he's gone. It's not a coincidence. We've changed our, the way we fight fire over the years. We can change the way we prepare, the way we uh, decontaminate after a fire. There's a lot we can do, and it, it's really not that tough. It's just, most of it's a mindset. And if you put the same stuff on without washing it and go back and sweat in it again, then you're, you're gonna catch it. It's something you can catch. It's just like a flu shot, you get a flu shot keep getting the flu. All I gotta do is take a bath. Because it starts with us. It starts with me. It starts with a recruit from day one. You know, it starts with that individual. I'm Ricky Roberts, Chief of Training with the Prowler Fire Department, and it starts with me. I'm Justin Gillum from Graceville Fire Department, and it starts with me. Hey, I'm Don Fisher, Chief of the Fort Payne Fire Department, and it starts with me. I'm Jonathan Ledbetter, Firefighter Paramedic with Arneana Fire and Rescue Service, and it starts with me. I'm Charles Gordon, Fire Chief of Birmingham Fire Rescue Service. It all starts with me. It starts with me. For more detailed information on this subject, follow the links on the screen or in the description below.